Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a trio of buttercream. So we're going to make American buttercream, we're going to make Swiss meringue buttercream, but first we're going to start off with an Italian meringue buttercream. So Italian meringue buttercream is a bit of a fat to make, but it does yield you this really lovely like buttery, silky buttercream, which isn't as sweet as your standard buttercream. So to start off, we're going to make a sugar syrup, so that's sugar and water. We're going to place that into a saucepan, and over medium heat, we're going to heat that with a candy thermometer. Now if you want all the details and ingredients and quantities, they'll be in the description box below. So while your sugar syrup is heating up on the stove, you're going to get going on your egg whites. So we've got three egg whites in this recipe and we're going to put those into your stand mixer and you're going to beat those on high speed until we've got light and fluffy egg whites. If you feel they're starting to go a bit dry, you want to turn the mixer off straight away because you don't want them to dry out, you just want them to be nice and light and fluffy. Once your sugar syrup has reached 115 degrees Celsius, your egg whites should be ready and you're going to pour the sugar syrup into the egg whites in a slow and steady stream. You want to hit the sweet spot where it's not hitting the whisk but it's not hitting the side of the bowl because if it hits the whisk it's going to splatter everywhere. If it hits the side of the bowl it's going to solidify so you want to hit them in between the two. And we're going to do that nice and slow. Uh, it'll take a bit of time. If you do it too quickly it's going to cook your egg whites and you're going to end up with this sort of really grim taste which you don't want. So once all your sugar syrup is in you should have this really nice and glossy Italian meringue. But that's going to be too hot so if you add the butter in now it's going to melt straight away. So you want to whip that on high speed until you can feel the side of the bottle and there's absolutely no heat at all. Now we can add in the butter. So I've got really, really soft room temperature butter. I got this out the morning that I was making this and I made it in the afternoon. So it was really, really soft. You can see here how soft it is. You should be able to put your finger in it and have no resistance at all. And we're going to add this in a little piece at a time. Now yes, this is quite time consuming. It'll take you a good 10 minutes standing there putting the butter in. It's not difficult, it just takes a really long time. But that's what Italian meringue buttercream is. You want to be patient while you're adding in the butter because it, it won't look like Italian meringue buttercream until really near the end. It'll look like a sloppy mess, but then once you get to the last couple pieces of butter and you're going to whip it for about five minutes after you've finished with the butter and you should get this really nice, thick, glossy Italian meringue buttercream. Now there's two things that could happen to you in buttercream here. Now this also applies to the Swiss meringue buttercream. Number one, it could go soft and sloppy. If that happens, all you need to do is whack it in the fridge for about 20 minutes to half an hour and then you want to whip that on high speed for about five minutes minutes and it should come back. If it's still too soft, fridge for another 10 minutes and just keep doing that and it you really should yield you a brilliant buttercream. Now the second thing that could happen to your buttercream is it could curdle and this is because the butter is too cold. If that happens you want to just take a pot of simmering water and place your whole buttercream over the top and just stir that with your spatula for literally a couple minutes just to warm it through a bit and then give that a good whip on high speed and it should come back together. And that's Italian meringue buttercream. Now this is probably the nicest of the three buttercreams, but it's actually the one that I make the least because it's such a fat, I just can't bother to make it most of the time. Having said that, a close second in flavour is a Swiss meringue buttercream and this is a lot easier to make. Now a Swiss meringue is pretty similar to an Italian meringue. All it is is your egg whites and your sugar in a bowl and we're going to place that over a bain marie and you're going to stir that with a whisk until all the sugar has dissolved. You can do that by feeling a little bit between your fingers and there should be no grains of sugar there. Now if the bowl for your stand mixer is heat proof, by all means use yours, but mine wasn't because it has these little rubber bits that I thought would melt. So I had to do this in a separate bowl and then I've transferred it into my stand mixer bowl and you're going to whip that again for about 10 minutes until it cools down completely to room temperature. And at this point it's exactly the same as the Italian meringue buttercream, we're just going to add in the butter cube by cube until it's nice and fluffy. Exactly the same as before, if it's too soft, chuck it in the fridge, if it's too warm, put it back over the bain marie for a couple minutes and give it another good whip. Now Swiss meringue buttercream and Italian meringue buttercream are pretty similar. I reckon if you did a blind taste test, the majority of people probably won't be able to tell the difference. So if I was you, I'd go for a Swiss meringue buttercream because it's so much easier. You have to worry about melting sugar and adding it in slowly, you just stir it together, whip it, add the butter. I mean it still takes a long time but it's a lot quicker than the Italian meringue. Now onto my personal favourite, the good old classic American or English buttercream. This is so easy and it only requires literally a few ingredients. So we're going to start off with softened butter. Now it doesn't have to be as soft as when making meringue buttercreams, um, but you just want it to be sort of softened a little bit. You're going to place that into your stand mixer and you're going to beat that for a good 10-15 minutes. Now this does take a lot of time like the other two, but it's not actually time that you fit to get to do. You can go and do something else and leave that mixing, so it's not as time consuming. Now once you've got a light pale butter, you should be able to tell in it, you can see a significant difference between the non-whipped butter and the whipped butter. We're going to add our icing sugar, now this is sifted icing sugar, and you're going to add that in a couple tablespoons at a time. I go with a third of a cup, but if you don't have cup measurements, a couple tablespoons is fine. 
Now the reason you add it slowly is because it helps it incorporate into the butter and it dissolves a lot better and it means you'll have a less grainy buttercream. So with all your eggs and sugar in, now's the point when you need to control the consistency. Unlike with the meringue buttercreams, the consistency isn't sorted. As long as you fold the recipes with the meringue buttercream, you're going to get perfect consistency every time. With this one, your butter could be more soft, less soft, your icing could have absorbed more and made it softer. So it's always going to be a little bit more difficult to get a perfect consistency. But basically, you're looking for something that's soft enough to spread, but not so soft that if you put a weight on top of it, such as another layer of cake, it's going to all squidge out the side. So if you feel like icing is a little bit too thin, just chuck in a bit more icing sugar, make sure you sip it. If you feel like your icing is too thick, and when you get a pipe or something, it's going to all fray around the edges, a little bit of milk, but be careful, add your milk in slowly. So there you go, I'm going to write the full ingredients and quantities and the recipes in the description box below. Also going to put a little bit of information about when I like to use the buttercreams and the pros and cons of them all. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you give these recipes a try and let me know in the comments how you did. You can subscribe by clicking that. You can click here for my last video and here for a video randomly selected by YouTube for you.